What is good everyone welcome to the second part of my inverter series where I convert 220 volts DC to 50 hertz 220 volt AC signal I have used very simple components like the SG3525 along with some passive components Now before we get started with the project make sure to check out the first part of this series where I convert the 12 volts DC to 220 volts DC the link will be in the description and the i button above Now these are all the components required to make the project. I got some of the components from old unused circuits as well as some old computer power supplies. The detailed description of all the parts used and the schematic will be in the link in the description. Let us have a look at the circuit diagram for the project. The SG3525 is configured as a 50 Hz oscillator. The frequency is being determined by this resistance R1, a variable resistance R9. and a capacitor C1 the variable resistance R9 is used to fine tune the frequency to 50 hertz the output of the SG3525 can be obtained from pins 11 and 14 now the ac signal is obtained by the following edge bridge consisting of four mosfets the mosfets are IRF840 n channel mosfets which are capable of switching voltages up to 600 volts so these mosfets are ideal for our application Two, these two MOSFETs are called the high side MOSFETs, and the lower ones are called the low side MOSFETs. To efficiently drive them, I have used the following MOSFET driver, IR2104. The two signals from the SG3525 goes to the input of both the IR2104 MOSFET drivers. Now consider the case where pin 11 is high and pin 14 is low. In that case, the high side MOSFET pin. of the first mosfet driver is active and the low side mosfet pin is inactive the reverse happens in case of the second mosfet driver where the high side is inactive and the low side is active for this instance this high side mosfet is active and this low side mosfet is active thus making one direction of the current to flow now when the signal switches meaning when pin 11 goes low and pin 11 goes pin 14 goes high the high side mosfet of the second mosfet driver is on the low side mosfet of the second mosfet driver is off and just the reverse happens for the first mosfet driver in this case this high side mosfet and this low side mosfet is active thus changing the direction of the current that was previously there now since the switching happens at 50 hertz the output of the edge bridge is a 50 hertz signal of magnitude around 240 volts now it is important to decide the placement of the components before finally soldering them in place so that we can keep the solder traces to a minimum this makes our circuit more sturdy neat and the connections more stable the use of jumper wire is also minimized One important part of this circuit is this huge capacitor bank which is used to smoothen out the 240 volts DC signal coming into this circuit. Here I have a series combination of two capacitors. Each capacitor has a rating of 330 microfarad with a voltage rating of 200 volts. Combining them in series gives me an effective capacitance of roughly 165 microfarads and a voltage rating of 400 volts. This is enough for our application and stabilizes the DC signal so that we have smooth AC output. Before we begin the soldering process, I decided to take all the components and fix it on a small breadboard to test out the circuit and make any changes if required. Here you can see my arrangement of the oscillator, the MOSFET drivers and the edge bridge consisting of four IRF840 N channel MOSFETs. This is what my entire breadboard setup looks like with the capacitors in place. I've also attached a small oscilloscope to measure the output frequency and set it to 50 Hz. The frequency can be adjusted by the potentiometer of the SG3525 oscillator circuit. I've also attached a small table fan of 60 watts to test the circuit out. Over here you can see the DC to DC converter. Now with the entire breadboard setup complete it's finally time to test the circuit. 
For this I have used a 12 volt lead acid battery to power the entire system. After a satisfactory breadboard test, it is now time to move on to the soldering process and fixing all the components. Over here you can see I have already soldered the required parts for the SG3525 oscillator. It is now time to solder the MOSFET driver IC base, the bootstrap capacitors and diode in place. The bootstrap capacitor and diode is required to drive the high side MOSFETs efficiently. It is now time to solder the capacitor banks. After soldering the capacitor banks in place, it is now time to solder the edge bridge MOSFETs, the gate limiting resistors and the screw terminals for the input DC voltage and the output AC voltage. With that being said, our soldering process is complete and this is what the entire module looks like. This screw terminal is for the input 240 volts DC signal and the following screw terminal is for the 240 volts AC output signal. The two wires are for the power supply for the oscillator and the MOSFET driver circuit. As you can see, the solder traces are small, neat and tidy making sure that there are no shorts. This is what the entire project looks like with the DC to DC converter and the edge bit section. With the module complete, it is now time for the final testing. Over here, I have the DC to DC converter along with the edge bridge oscillator along with a small 60 watt DC fan and a multimeter to measure the output voltage. Let us now connect the 240 volts DC output to the input of the edge bridge driver. The voltage supply for the oscillator section and the MOSFET driver comes from the 12 volt battery that we have attached. Finally, let us attach wires to the output AC section along with a multimeter to verify the output voltage and an AC socket.
With all the necessary connections complete, it is now time for a final test of the module. As you can see this inverter drives the 60 watt fan without a problem. Let us now try to charge our phone with the commercial wall adapter. And as you can see we can charge our mobile phone without a problem. This system can easily power small to medium appliances like a laptop charger, phone chargers, a small table fan, CFLs and an incandescent bulb. Feel free to share your feedbacks in the comment section. Like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one.